Think it over, honey. Marvel's a tough racket. You're on velvet one day and linoleum the next. I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. I'm sure we'd make good. We? Where do you get this we stuff? This offer's only for you alone. Of course, you can't bring your mother to take you home now. Oh, well, I couldn't think of it. After all, my partner's done for me and we've been through together. Surely you're not going to make the same mistake that so many other girls have made by letting your heart run away with your head. Don't use your head, dear, just to keep your ears apart. Well, it isn't exactly a question of the heart. It, it, well, it doesn't seem quite fair. It doesn't seem quite right to break up the act. You see, everything I am, I owe to him. He's had a hard struggle knocking some sense into my feet. And, well, after all we've been through together and the bumps and knocks to get here, and now that we've made the grade, well, you understand, don't you? I know. You've made Broadway and you don't want to leave it. That's right, dear. Stay on Broadway and keep off of those side streets. In Vaudeville, you won't get more than six weeks in town. My offer's for a whole year. That's true. And besides, Miss Malone's club has led many a girl to stardom. Really, I... I don't know what to say. Do you mind if I talk it over with my partner? Don't bother about your partner. Be hard boy. Forget those heartaches. Oh, but he's different. He's sensible. I know. All men are alike. I got a raw deal once. And from an actor, too. I'll pay you more in one week than you learn in Vaudeville in a whole month. Now, doesn't that sound good? However, think it over. Remember, whatever we're trying to do is for your own good. Let her talk to her father. I'll bring him right over. You give those little girls a hand, they want an arm. Without arm, she's 100%. I notice, with the way she's drawing your interest. <laughs> What do you think about it, B? Don't you think it would be a great chance for me? Maybe. But you don't realize what it means. Breaking us up, that's all I'm thinking of. More than anything else. But it wouldn't be for long. I think we'd be back together again. Well, you know what you want to do. If you want to take that nightclub job, go ahead. I won't, I won't stand in your way. Nettie. You won't feel hurt? Hurt? No. Gee, it's a great opportunity. The season on Broadway and... Oh, I think it's great. Heidi, you're a peach. Well, how about it? Isn't it great? He says it's all right for me to go. Well, that's fine. Why didn't you bring the little fellow over so I could give him a nice big hand? Oh, he's getting dressed. Uh, won't you join us at dinner? Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going out with my partner. Well, now that that's settled, I'll see you tomorrow morning, honey. That means about three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. I'll be there. Goodbye. Uh, sorry you won't join us. Come on, Don. Don Juan. Boy, I was proud of you this afternoon. That was marvelous, son. Oh, it was wonderful. I couldn't have done any better myself. It was 100 per... Well, listen, what's the matter? Since, son, nothing went wrong with the act, did it? I'm afraid there isn't any act. What do you mean, there isn't any act? It's just what I said. After Saturday night, we're all washed up. Oh, now, Stop fooling, would you? You're crazy, aren't you? Ah, oh, but Pop, now listen. Now, wait a minute. No listen. Didn't you stop the show cold, didn't you? Well, the agents didn't think so. B got over with them all right, but... Oh, I was a flop. Flop? <laughs> you a flop? Oh, boy, don't make me laugh. I've got a split lip. You a flop. Son, you couldn't have gone any better if you carried your own audience around the country with you. You a flop. Did those agents tell you that? Now I know why they don't know anything about show business. You just stick around, son, and I'm going up and tell those punk agents what I really think of them. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, don't get all excited. Well, talking might, uh, might hurt B. 
Well, listen, what's she got to do with it, boy? Well, she got a good offer from Tex Malone. You mean to, to work in a nightclub? Yes, as long as it didn't like me, I said, to go ahead and take it. What, and, and, and split up the act? No, I'm the one that's putting up the act. She, she didn't want to take the job, but I made her. I told her it was a chance of a lifetime. And she pop, she'll be great. She'll be the biggest hit in New York. You see if she won't. And we'll be proud of her. Listen, boy. What do we care about being proud of her? I'm proud of you. That's the thing that really counts. Now, come on, son. Pull yourself out of it, will you? Come on, boy. You know what they're really trying to do? They just want to take advantage of you and cut your salary. That's what the idea is. Come on, now, brace up, old kid. It's Daddy talking to you. I get in touch with him now. At his apartment this time, right? What's his number? River 2141. River 2141. Right. having a chance of beating that rap. It's now on the Ack and Cray. Hello, boy. Hello, oh, Holland. Oh, so you've decided to come over and get my place of play. Well, we have to hang out somewhere since they closed our place. Make yourselves right at home here. Of course, you'll be opening up your own place soon again, but uh, uh, when you do, don't try to take text back or any of my other talents. Oh, no. We wouldn't do anything like that. to do a thing after being used to working with you. Besides, I'm not crazy about going on the road alone. Well, I'm not so crazy about that either. 
But you've got to do something. Well, if you want to know the truth, this isn't the right kind of a place for you to be working in. Think of the hours you've got to put in this joint. From 8 o'clock until 4 in the morning. Well, you'll break down under it. No, oh, this place isn't hurting me. I like it. No, you don't. You don't like it. This isn't your kind of a life. Oh, please don't start preaching again. I've heard enough of it for the last two weeks. If I want to hear a sermon, I know where to go for it. I'm only telling you these things for your own good. Oh, please don't treat me like a baby. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Well, I don't think you can. But you can use your own judgment. Come on, Eddie. Let's not argue anymore. I have to go on and do my number. Well, I'm going home. No, don't do that. Come on out and watch. Come on, Eddie. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. All right. Hurry up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Oh, you want to see little B. Wallace and those little baby bandits? Girl, a hand. That little girl's entitled to a bigger hand than that. Come on, I'm gonna Now this little girl, this little girl is little B. Walton. And I want this little girl to get a nice big hand because her father, her father is probably one of the best known butchers up around 185th And that old man is listening in tonight on the radio to see how this little girl's going to go. You wouldn't keep that old man up till this hour of the night without giving that little girl a hand. Come on, give her a hand! <laughs> that gun gag with Don Holland every night. You know, I think she's a little bit stuck on him. Yeah. I wish she had a bullet in it. Yeah. That's the best thought you've had in a long while. Not a guest. Oh, how dare you talk to me that way before my friends? How dare he talk that way to you in front of anyone? Oh, oh shut up. I know what I'm doing. Uh, now, wait a minute, young man. I advise you to cut out those wild speeches. I'll make any kind of a wild speech I want. Oh, Eddie, now please don't lose your temper. Now, little boy Blue, if you're going to lose your temper, I'll have to stop you from coming in here. You won't stop me from doing anything. Here's a wild speech for you to remember. 
If you don't lay off of her, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Oh, Eddie, behave yourself. I guarantee you all a fight of your money back for something you don't get. <laughs> Look here, young man. You picked the wrong text. The text you're looking for is over at Madison Square Garden. I hope you brought your trainer, because it looks like he's going to do a little road work right now. Ah, behave. Can we put him out or let him stay? Thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> Oh, Larry, do yourself. Why, I ought to punch you right in the jaw. Yeah, oh, get out of there, Larry. Come on, take him out. You'll be out. sorry for that. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello, B. This is Eddie. Well, what do you want? Well, I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am. For acting like a big chump. Well, I should think you would. You've been awful nervy even calling me up after the way you acted. Making a fool of me before my friends. Well, I'm telling you I'm sorry. Can't you forget it? Ah, oh, come on. Well, I'll think about it. Well, tell me what you do. You wait right there and I'll be over. Oh, but you can't do that. I'm on my way to the club. Besides, I have an appointment. Oh. But that Holland guy again, huh? Well, what if it is? That's none of your business. Well, I'll make it my business. Oh, you will, will you? Well, now you listen to me. I'm sick and tired of you interfering in my affairs. And that's that. Hello, operator. Operator, you cut me off. I say you cut me off. You did so cut me off. What's the matter? Eddie, look at me. What are you all excited about? Oh, I'm not excited. Well, you look as if you were. Now, forget it. Don't let a dame get your goat. Come on. Why don't you get another partner? Go back to work. Don't let B stand in your way. She didn't let you stand in hers, did she? All right, this laying off business is, well, getting on your nerves. Oh, it's not the lay off, Pop. You don't understand. I don't want another partner, and, well, I want to work with B. All right, then. Go ahead and have a talk with her. Talk with her? Yes. Try and talk with her. When you go to meet her at her apartment, she's going out with Holland. And when you go to the club, she's sitting with him. Oh, I'm going to have it out. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. What do you expect that you can do, son? Oh, I can do a lot about it. Now, oh, listen, Eddie, calm I'll yourself. Put a trip in that Holland's game. Now, wait a minute. Don't lose your head, boy. I'm not losing my head. I'm 21. I can take care of myself. All right, I know that, but that's no way to talk. Oh, let now, me out. Now, now Eddie, 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 will you please? Eddie, 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 just a second. Oh, Eddie. Bye. You remember that sucker I was going to marry? Sure. Well, now he passes by. Oh, man. And it's great to have a lot of pals, and they make your business large. It's tough around three or four in the morning. They say take off seat cover charge, and it gets your boat to meet a lot of local dairy men who just sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit. Why, they yell and let an awful squawk if their bills a dollar ten. Well, it's tough to, to be, be a hostess. I know a broad Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now we're going to have little B. Waters and her little baby Ben. And they'll take everything from your phone number, your address, and your pocketbook. Let her go, George. <laughs> Yeah. 
Don't point that thing at me. I've got a weak heart. You better get the bullet out of that rod before somebody gets hurt. Me, Don. Oh. May I come in? Oh, you can't come in now. I'm... No, no, no. Don't apologize. I don't mind your changing. Well, maybe you don't, but I do. What do you want? There's something I want to talk over with you. I understand that uh, Quinlan made you an offer today to work in his night club. Mm-hmm. He's going to reopen. He wants to feature me. Are you going to go with him? Well, I haven't decided yet. Good. Then I'll decide for you. You never work for Quinlan. And why not? Because Quinlan will never reopen his club. I've seen to that. Aren't you overestimating yourself a bit? I know my power. I have his club padlocked, and it's going to stay padlocked. But isn't that dangerous? No, when anyone becomes dangerous, there's always a way out. Mm. And I'd like to find a way out from behind this screen. Mr. Holland, please. Well, now, what's to prevent you? You, and something to wear. I might bring you a little tiny bit of something to wear. If you would, please. Right behind those curtains over there, there's a blue... Get my dress or get out of here. I'll get the dress. had nothing to do with it. It was done by a cheap little ham actor named Eddie Parr. You wouldn't know him. He dances around these... Give me that telephone. Hello. Listen, just don't... What are you doing here? Don't pay any attention to her. Just give me that phone. Wait a minute, I tell you she's crazy. You! There hasn't been any murder here. Where's that boy? That's what I want to know. Where's my boy? Come on, tell me. Where is he? I'm going to find out and take him out of here. This kid wants to phone his old man. He can't phone anybody. Eddie, Eddie, why did you come here? I told you you'd get into trouble. Now, Pop, it's no time to tell me about what you said. I got myself in the jam and I'll get out of it. Now, listen, you find B, you tell her not to talk, but she talks to me first. Listen, don't stand there. Let's do something. Barry, don't let anybody down that hall and for heaven's sake, keep that music going. We've got to do something. We've got to get that boy out of here. I you keep out of this. I don't, need, I don't need any help from you. Son, you don't understand. Please oh, keep away from me. Wait a minute. She's trying to help you, boy. The cop! The cop. Listen, Pop. She's the one that got me in this gym. I tell you, she's no good. You don't understand. We'll put her on the couch. Hurry up. Put... Oh, I'm not going to Wait a minute. Eddie, come on. Get oh, in. Oh, I don't want to get in. Get in. Get in the couch. Tell you, son. Hurry up. Get in. Don't hurt him. 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 Don't h
hospital. Find that girl. Tell her not to open her mouth and don't you say a word. I will be the help that boy. They cut out on his mother. Hurry up. Get out. Right, don't warn him. Okay, Chief. Sergeant, you take charge of the men downstairs. Tell them to stay where I put them, and don't let anybody get away from here. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, Tex, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get him. He hasn't got a chance to get away. Now, I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, how long ago did this happen? About ten minutes ago, Inspector. Uh-huh. Uh, was there a girl dressing in that room? Uh, yes. Uh, Bill Walters. Oh. Was she, um, thick with the man who did the shooting? Well, she was his vulnerable partner. No. <laughs> well, that makes it easy. Motive jealousy. Yes, jealousy. Now tell me this, Tex. Uh, was this girl in the room when the fireworks were going on? Uh, well, Inspector, I really don't know. No, oh, no, no. Don't you worry. My men will get him all right while he's just as good as in the box right now. Now you can give me a description of him, can't you? Inspector, uh, I think there might be a picture of him in her dressing room. No, you don't mean to say you got a picture of him. Yes, her dressing room is right across the hall. Would you like to see it? Would I? Well, I should say I would say, come on, that would be great. <laughs> No, no. That's the boy she worked with before. Oh. Well, it looks to me like a clear case of a fool kid losing his head over a skirt. Yes. No, no, I'll keep this. Well, we get a conviction. There won't be any trouble about that. We'll turn him to the chair, sure. Now, tell me, where was the boy standing when you came into the room? Inspector, when I can... Headquarters wants you on the phone in Miss Malone's office. All right. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Inspector Kogler. Uh huh. What? Oh, good, good. Uh huh. You got her, eh? Got her in her apartment, eh? <laughs> now we got the dame, all right. Huh? Yeah. Well, send her downtown, and we'll give her the works down there. Caught him coming down the fire escape from this window. <laughs> so you want to be a killer, do you? We got your game, all right, all right. So you'd kill a man for a cheap double-crossing skirt, would you? Uh, Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you imagine the kid resisting an officer? <laughs> Eddie, dear, I've got some good news for you. Greg and I have an appointment with the district attorney about your bail, and I think I've brought enough pressure to turn the trick. Mother, anything you do is okay. Shh. Not a lot on that mother, dear. If they ever find out that I'm your mother, I won't be able to help you, and everything's going to turn out all right. Oh, gee, I wish we were back doing all right. Don't worry, you will be. Well, I must go. I've got to go and meet your father, and you know how he squawks if you keep him waiting. Although he kept me waiting for 20 years. So, I'll meet you, B, at Grant's office at 3 o'clock. Now, let me see a little smile on that face, son, before I go. Come on. Everything's going to be all right, and we'll soon have you out of it. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mother. Oh, I wish you were out of here. Oh, this isn't so bad. We played a lot of times. We're worse than this. You're a game kid, Eddie. But I can't forget that I'm to blame for your being here. Oh, if I hadn't been selfish. If I'd only kept Broadway under my feet instead of letting it get to my head. You wouldn't be here and oh, we'd still be. See, it wasn't your fault. If I hadn't lost my head, this thing wouldn't have happened. I'm not going to lose my head again either. Unless it's over you. You ready? You know what I wish? What? I wish these weren't here. Lunch, Eddie. Eddie, what time will I come tomorrow? Well, any time at all, please. I'll be here all day. Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, Eddie. I've been uh, reading quite a lot about that Eddie Park case lately. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind, but he's guilty. If I had my way, why, he'd get the chair. You know, the chair is too good for a guy like that. Yeah? Mr. Davis, from what you have heard, or from any newspaper articles which you may have read, have you formed any fixed opinions on this case? No, I have not. Pass the juror. Now, isn't it a fact, Miss Walters, that Eddie Parr resented Holland's attentions to you? No, sir. Did you ever hear Eddie Parr threaten Don Holland? No, sir, I did not. Did Eddie Parr ever quarrel with you over Don Holland? No, sir. Now, isn't it a fact that Holland indirectly was responsible for the split between you and Eddie Parr as a vaudeville team? No, sir, he was not. That's all. Miss Walters, was not the dissolving of your act, this theatrical partnership between uh, Mr. Parr and yourself, done with his full knowledge and consent? Yes, sir. In fact, he advised me to leave the act. That is all, Miss Walters. Where the evidence given this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. I do. Now, Mr. Martin, you voluntarily came to my office and offered to testify in this case, didn't you? Yes, sir. What was the condition of this defendant when you saw him in the nightclub on the night of the murder? He had a murderous look in his face. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Well, let me put the question another way. Did this defendant look calm, or was he in an excited condition? Uh, he was excited. Well, what caused you to believe that he was excited? Why, the way he acted. 
And that's what attracted your attention and caused you to remember the incident? Yes, sir. That's all. Ask the witness. I entered the dressing room and found Eddie Parr standing over Holland's body with a gun in his hand. Did you see anyone else in the room at the time? No, sir. Did you hear any statement made in the room? Yes, sir. Miss Malone said, you dirty rat, you burn for this. Then she wanted me to hold him until she could call the cops. Oh, so you stood guard over the defendant until the police arrived? No, sir. No, the boy said he wanted to call his father. So I took him across the hall into Miss Malone's private office. That's all, Mr. Crandall. Don't go away. I may want to use you again. Yes, sir. Your witness, Counselor. Mr. Crandall, you just stated there was no one else in the room when you entered except the defendant. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Crandall, from the time you heard the shot fired and until you entered the scene of the murder, don't you think someone else could have fired that shot and escaped through the window? Why, I think... I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. State only what you saw or heard, not what you think. Yes, sir. That is all, Mr. Crandall. Mr. Tex Malone. I want Miss Malone to take the oath again. You solemnly swear that the testimony given this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God. I do. Now, Miss Malone, isn't it a fact? But when you were on the stand before, you had a very convenient memory. You couldn't remember phoning the police. No. You couldn't remember giving Eddie Parr's name to them. No. Now, I've gone to the trouble of calling these witnesses back to the stand, which I hope has refreshed your memory. Now, Miss Malone, you realize the significance of the oath you've just taken? You understand English, don't you? Yes, but I'm so much more familiar with Scotch. You've been having a lot of fun with me, but laugh this off. That photograph was found in your home. I offer it as evidence. And this photograph is an exact duplicate, which was found in Eddie Parr's room. Now, Miss Malone, do you recognize the woman in that picture? Winchell? Looks as if I had a hot tip on that story about the boy, doesn't it? Winchell, don't you suppose if that was my son, you'd be the first one I'd tell? I don't know. Now, Tex, I've always been your friend. Look at the break I gave you on that bandit number. They're even broadcasting in the magazines. Here's one that I picked up today. When was this published? Originally in our sheet the day after the murder. Can you get me the copy of this story? Will you give me the straight dope on the kid? You be at my house this afternoon, and I'll give you a great story. Okay, at 2 o'clock, I'll be here. Don't fail, Winchell. What's it all about? You go what in and tell it? Grant to come to our house immediately. All right, I will. Well, what is it? I can't explain now, B, but I'll tell you later. Come on. of the Supreme Court, State of New York, is now in session. The Honorable James T. Eldridge, presiding. All right, Mr. Grant, proceed with the trial. Call Mr. Martin to the stand. Mr. Martin, take the stand. And give me Exhibit A. Why did I want you up there, James? I don't know. Martin, take the stand, please. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Martin, do you recognize that revolver? No. Well, it has been established at the trial that this is the revolver with which uh, Don Holland was killed. Oh, uh, pardon me. You're not frightened uh, at revolvers, are you, Mr. Martin? Why, I... Uh... You didn't I... show any fear just now when I pointed this revolver at you and pulled the trigger? Why should I? It isn't loaded. Oh, I see. You're not frightened at an unloaded revolver, is that it? No. Mr. Martin, have you ever heard B. Walters uh, sing the bandit number at Tex Malone's nightclub? Oh, yes. How many times uh, have you heard Miss Walters sing that number? I don't remember. Four or five times? Yes, that many times at least. And uh, every time you witnessed that number, did the girls point the revolvers at the patrons and uh, pull the triggers? Yes. And did the girls point the revolver at you and pull the trigger? I object, oh, yeah. Your Honor. Irrelevant, incompetent, immaterial. Your Honor, I ask your indulgence for just a few moments. Objection overruled. Now, the girls have pointed the revolver at you and pulled the trigger. Yes. And were you frightened? Uh, no. Why not? Well, because I... Because you knew the revolver wasn't uh, loaded, is that I it? I object, Your Honor. Improper foundation. Objection sustained. Your Honor. I have a request to make. I would like to have a private conference with Your Honor and the prosecuting attorney. Is it of such a nature that it cannot be discussed in open court? It is vital to the defendant, Your Honor. The court is adjourned. Recess for five minutes. William, you have no personal interest in prosecuting Eddie Parr, have you? No. But it is your duty to gain a conviction, to extract the law's pound of flesh, in other words, for this murder. That is your only duty, isn't it? Yes. Now listen, Grant. You don't hope, by even the wildest stretch of imagination, to prove Eddie Parr innocent, do you? No, I don't. I want you to prove him innocent, Williams. What? Now, come on, Grant. What's on your mind? I want to get through with this case. Take a look at that. They, you know what they're going to try to do? What? Grant's going to try to plead this kid guilty to second-degree murder. He hasn't got a chance. Well, he can't get ruled off for trying. Can't? Grant, it looks hopeless for your client, but you've really intrigued me. It's unusual procedure, but I'll see what I can do. Now, Martin, Mr. Grant is trying to establish the fact that you were very nervous when Miss Walters pointed the gun at you. What is there in that to make me nervous? Hmm, nothing natural. Naturally, you wouldn't be worried over an unloaded gun. No, I'm not. Now, Martin, do you recall a certain flashlight picture that Tex Malone had taken of the bandit number? No, I don't. The flashlight pictures are a pet gag of hers. She's a hound for publicity. Mr. Grant, have I your permission to submit this evidence? Go right ahead. Now, Martin. Isn't this a reproduction of that flashlight picture taken at Tex Malone's on the night of the murder? Why, yes. Do you... Do you recognize yourself in that picture? That's well, kind of weak. Yes, it's a... It's a small cut, indistinct and blurred. But isn't that... Isn't that you in the center? Well, that could be most anybody. Well, if it is me... It doesn't do me justice. Your Honor, 
I submit this as evidence. Mr. Grant said that in this picture, he was showing signs of fear because you knew Miss Walter's gun contained a bullet. Were you afraid that night? No. On that night or any other night. But it's natural, isn't it, that you would have had some fear had you known the gun was loaded? Well, nobody likes to look into a loaded gun. It might go off. Therefore, if you knew this gun contained even only one bullet, you'd have been afraid of it, wouldn't you? Naturally. Bring in that easel. Now, I'm going to show you an enlargement of the original flashlight. You may refresh your memory. I ask you to issue a warrant for the arrest of Nick Martin, the murderer of Don Holland, for the following reason. I'm convinced that Nick Martin placed the bullet in that gun and that he knew it was loaded when the flashlight picture was taken. I did not. I didn't know anything about it. Silence, sir. I also believe that Nick Martin offered himself to me as my witness in this case to save himself. And through his own attorney, I expect to definitely establish his motive for the killing. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about it. Well, give me a chance to explain. I didn't know a thing about it. Stop him! Stop him! That's, he's the man who killed This is Jones, Department 10. Send up a couple of stretchers. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very, very much for the way you received our little offering. Because after all the trials and the tribulations we've been through in the past few weeks, well, we didn't know just how you were going to receive them. <laughs> and being together again is just real homemade happiness. And whoever says that every cloud has a silver lining certainly set a sky <laughs> Now, Broadway may be heartache lane to some folks, but it's been mighty good to me. On Broadway, you'll find laughter and tears, success and failures. You'll find triumph and despair. But on Broadway, I found the greatest happiness in my whole life. I found my boy. And as you all know, I've played the world for suckers, but I guess I'm the biggest sucker of them all. <clears throat> and after everything is said and done, there's nothing done. And as the two little bees said to each other, as they were about to sting the little girl on the wrist, let's get together and give this little girl a great big hand. <laughs>